And now from McAllen City Hall, a meeting of the McAllen City Commission. And good evening, everybody. We're running just a little bit late, 514, but welcome, everybody, to the City of McAllen's last City Commission meeting. Welcome. And we're going to begin today with a Pledge of Allegiance, followed by the invocation by Mayor Pro Tem, Joaquin Zamora. <clears throat> and we'll wait for Commissioner Pepe de Vaca. Vice de Vaca. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I could please ask you to please bow your heads. God of justice and mercy, thank you for the gift of life and the opportunity to serve the people of our great city of McAllen. Help us to act with character and conviction. Help us to listen with understanding and goodwill. Help us to speak with charity and restraint. Give us a spirit of service. Remind us that we are stewards of your authority. Guide us to be the leaders of your people's needs. Help us see the humanity and dignity of those who disagree with us. And to treat all persons, no matter how weak or poor, with the reverence your creation deserves. And finally, Father God, renew us with the strength of your presence and the joy of helping to build a community worthy of the human person. We ask this as your sons and daughters, confident in your goodness and love, Lord Jesus, then we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mayor Potem. We have a few proclamations. First of all, we have Tuba Christmas presented by Mayor Potem Zamora. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Mayor and the Board of Commissioners. It is certainly my uh, distinction and privilege to make this proclamation on behalf of the Board of Commissioners and Mayor Villalobos, uh, City of McAllen. Well, hang on. Dr. Reeder, would you like to come forward, please, just for a brief minute? Dr. Reeder is the uh, coordinator, organizer, custodian of uh, Tuba Christmas. Uh, this concert was held yesterday on Sunday, December the 12th at the McAllen Performing Arts Center. We had a special guest artist by the name of Adam Fry, Wonderful euphonium player. Uh, if you can, look him up on YouTube. Um, I, he did things with a euphonium or a baritone that I never thought you could. And uh, it was really exciting to see. And um, if, if you didn't go out to this concert yesterday, please make plans for December 11, 2022. City of McAllen Proclamation, State of Texas, County of Hidalgo, City of McAllen. Whereas tuba Christmas concerts have become an annual holiday tradition in cities throughout the world, and whereas tuba Christmas concerts were initiated by renowned tubist Harvey G. Phillips in 1974, and whereas Tuba Christmas honors all tuba and euphonium artists and teachers through the legendary, legendary William J. Bell, born on Christmas Day in 1902. Tuba Christmas gratefully honors all composers who have embraced these noble instruments with their compositions through American uh, composer Alec Wilder, who died on Christmas Eve in 1980 and who contributed his arrangements of traditional Christmas carols to Tuba Christmas. And whereas the mayor and city commission would like to take this opportunity to thank Tuba Christmas coordinator Deborah Loya and members of the 2021 Rio Grande Valley Tuba Christmas Ensemble for bringing the wonderful annual holiday event to our great city and for sharing the Christmas spirit at the city commission meeting each year. Now, therefore, I, Joaquin Samuada, Mayor Pro Tem of the City of McAllen, Texas, by the virtue of authority vested in me on behalf of the Mayor and the Board of Commissioners of the City of McAllen, do hereby proclaim December the 13th, 2021, as Tuba Christmas Day. <laughs> Is Deborah here this afternoon? Deborah? No, okay. If I could have maybe Dr. Reed like to say a couple of words, please. Good evening. Uh, thank you so much for this and for supporting uh, this wonderful event for all the Rio Grande Valley. Uh, it's such a great community event and students and everyone I talked to just had a wonderful experience and this would not be possible without the support of the city of McAllen. So we are eternal. We are very grateful for your support for this event. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. <laughs> 
Uh, I, I think they want to entertain us, Mayor. Is that sure. okay? Oh, it'd be wonderful. All right. Feliz Navidad, and we wish you a Merry Christmas. Thank y'all so much. And next we have a uh, Christmas for for kids, Chipa Rodriguez. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. And as a, as a 1975 graduate from Mac High, Pepper, you look beautiful. Well, I, I, I think we're going to uh, skip Christmas for kids real quick and do uh, uh, McCown High, High Steppers 50th anniversary. Oh, we are? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, I was just complimenting them. <laughs> They look so beautiful. Okay. okay, well, since everybody else is over here, Commissioner, let's take a seat real quick. You jumped in front of us. Did you? No. No. That who? I thought Chief was doing Christmas for kids. Yeah. He is. Yeah. He's right there. Oh, okay. I'm getting all confused then. <laughs> hey, you, you just do your own thing. It's the holiday season. <laughs> it's the holiday season. I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
proclamation, whereas... Yeah, we got a little confused there. The McAllen Police Department will host the 20th annual Christmas for Kids toy giveaway on Saturday, December the 18th at the, Mac High, at the McAllen Public Safety Building and Municipal, Municipal Park on Bicentennial and Quint Street, whereas the event will be kicked off by a parade of characters starting at Las Palmas Community Center on Quint's east of Bicentennial Boulevard beginning at 8 a.m. with more than 20 entries. And whereas, through the coordinate, coordinating efforts of the McAllen Police Department personnel, the continued support of Doctors Hospital at Renaissance, HEB, and other community partners that make Christmas for Kids possible with their kind donations. McAllen area children will have a Merry Christmas this year. Soccer balls, dolls, skateboards, and action figures, amongst other, th other toys that will be given away by the, to the children along with fresh fruit, <laughs> hot dogs, and candy. And whereas with everyone's support and effort, Christmas for Kids will continue to successfully distribute more than 5,000 toys to McAllen and the children in the area. Now, therefore, I, Antonio Tony Aguirre Jr., City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, by virtue of the, my authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and the City Commission, we do proclaim December 18th, 2021 as Christmas for Kids Day. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, members of the Commission, uh, to all the, the public here and those uh, watching us through the um, through our channel, uh, this is the City of McAllen's way to um, make Christmas a reality for for thousands of kids that otherwise may not have a bright Christmas. This is our 20th year. We estimate that we've serviced about 100,000 kids in those 20 years. We've had years where we've had 8,000 kids, and we've had years where we've had 4,000 kids. Um, so our estimate right now is at about 100,000 kids that, we'll, uh, that uh, we have serviced thus far. This year's event is on Saturday. Um, at 8 o'clock in the morning at the, at the corner of uh, Quince and Bicentennial is the, uh, the, uh, the main, main uh, point of, of distribution. Uh, the program is complete with a little parade, some music, um, and they get a bag of candy and goodies and food and things like that, and then they get, they get over to the toy station and they get toys as well. So the children are treated to a very... Um, to a full Christmas program on that morning. So we, we invite everybody uh, to, to come out and if, if, not, if not just see it or participate with us. Um, there is not a more rewarding um, activity than to see the, uh, the big eyes of kids when, when they're in line. Some of them line up beginning the night before. So that's how, uh, that's how um, important this project is to our, to our kids. And uh, we're very proud, the city of McAllen, through its mayor, our city commission, our leadership at McAllen, McAllen PD, that we've been able to do this for 20 years now. One of our principal partners uh, has been Doctors Hospital. Um, they've been our partners since day one. And uh, here I'd like to invite Mario Liscano on behalf of DHR to say a few things uh, as we close up today. And again, invite all of you to be with us on Saturday morning. Thank you, Chief. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Mayor and Commissioners. We'd like to take this opportunity to uh, make sure that we thank you for giving us this opportunity to continue to give back to our community. Uh, with, um, on behalf of our board of directors, our over 700 physicians, uh, 6,000 employees, uh, and all our volunteers, uh, we are happy to continue to not only support, participate, but to continue to support the efforts as the city of McAllen does such a wonderful, wonderful event for our children that uh, are in need this at this time. So thank you so much for everyone that is, is present. Uh, 
Chief Rodriguez, thank you so much for always allowing us to be there. Our doctors, uh, our medical staff will be available on Saturday as we participate to make sure that we distribute. And um, as, as anything else that we wanna make sure that um, we wish each and every one of you all a merry, merry Christmas. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and the next proclamation, and we'll make sure we read it properly. I've misread the other one big time. It's McAllen High Steppers 50 year anniversary presented by Commissioner Haddad. All right, you want to come on up? Good afternoon, or good evening, really. City of McAllen Proclamation. Whereas dance is an integral part of comprehensive fine arts programs in the state of Texas, offering young women and men an outlet to express themselves creatively, learn life skills, enjoy a sense of belonging, maintain good health, and receive leadership opportunities. The McAllen High School dance team, known far and wide as the Steppers, was established in 1971 and has served as a focal point highlighting the school and the program for thousands gathered at football games and many other events for decades. The Steppers have represented their school and the discipline of dance in an exemplary manner for 50 years, bringing joy to thousands of students and spectators. I, Sebi Haddad, City Commissioner of the City of McAllen, by virtue of the authority vested in me and on behalf of the Mayor and the City Com Commission, do hereby proclaim December 13th, 2021, McAllen High Steppers 50th Anniversary Day. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor Villalobos and Commissioners. We are very thankful and grateful for this recognition and thank you for inviting us here today. The Mac High Steppers 50th anniversary was a joyous event. It allowed us to meet several of the original members of the Steppers and learn about how the Stepper organization was created. Also, reuniting with all the Stepper alumni and making new friends and memories was a great experience for all of us. This event would not have been possible without the support of many people. Thank you to Dr. Gonzalez and McAllen ISD School Board, Fine Arts Director Debbie Loya Thomas, Mac High Principal Albert Canales, Assistant Stepper Director Brenda Ramirez, and last but not least, the Mac High Stepper alumni. Thank you, Mackay alumni and everyone else uh, for taking the time to be here with us today. Your support is never ending. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas, everybody. You're gonna leave us. Okay, we have a public hearing, agenda item number one. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Tonight we have three items listed under routine. There are three rezonings, as always, they come with a favorable recommendation from Plan and Zoning and had no opposition. They can be approved with one motion or discussed separately as desired, and they are a rezoning from R3A to R3T at 209 and 217 North 28, a rezone from C3L to R3T at 5308 North Ware, and a rezone from R1 to R3T at 58, 5308 North Ware Rear. Do we have anybody to speak out against these uh, rezonings? If not, do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve, motion to approve items A, one, two, and three. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item B. All right, this is an initial rezoning, initial zoning rather, to R1 at 7018 Mile 6 Road. So this property is located on the north side of Mile 6 Road, approximately 1,600 feet east of Stewart. It does measure uh, seven and a quarter acres. The tract is currently outside city limits, but is undergoing voluntary annexation as part of the subdivision process for a subdivision 
named Versailles Estates. That's a 38-lot single-family home subdivision. Adjacent zoning is R1 to the west, and everything else is ETJ. Um, in the initial, initial zoning was heard at the December 7th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. There was no opposition, and it was unanimously recommended for approval. We are recommending Is it that it was tabled? Um, was it tabled? Do we need to remove? No, not this one, sir. There's B1. No one. This is B1. They're, they're together. B1? Yeah, yeah B1 is one first, and then the table one. Maybe. Okay. Yeah. I tell you, my side is not what it used uh -huh. to be. Mm -hmm. Christmas time. It's Christmas time. Okay. No, anybody for or against item number one? Make a motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item B2. Item B2 has been withdrawn by the applicant. Okay, item C. Uh, so this is a conditional use permit uh, from Javier Quintanilla for life of the use for an amended planned unit development. Uh, this property is located on the east side of North Taylor, approximately 70 feet south of Sycamore. Uh, the subdivision's name is Quinta Real. Jason zoning is R1 to the north and east, AO to the south. Surrounding uses include single-family homes, businesses, and vacant land. The original PUD, uh, Planned Unit Development, was approved by City Commission in January of 2017 and was recorded in September of this year. Uh, the currently proposed buildings uh, or building, building layouts, rather, do not match the outlines uh, that were recorded with that site plan, so an amendment is necessary. Uh, there are also two new variances that are being requested, one for not meeting landscape requirements by 10 feet. That's about a 6% um, decrease. And then the maximum height being increased from 25 to 30 feet. The item was heard in the November 16th Plan and Zoning Commission meeting. There was one person in opposition citing drainage, dust, and weedy lots. Uh, after some discussion, PNZ did recommend approval of the CUP. We are recommending approval. Anybody here against the item? Nope. If not, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Motion carries. Do I hear item D? Do I hear a motion to approve? Motion to approve in the amendment. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Item E. Yes, sir, this is a public hearing and ordinance providing for the annexation of 7018 Mile 6 Road. Again, this property is located on the north side of Mile 6 Road, approximately 1,600 feet east of Stewart. It was just initially zoned to R1. Uh, they are requesting a waiver of park fees. Um, we have not received any calls or emails in opposition to annexation requests, and we are recommending annexation. Don't move. I'm okay. sorry. You have to... First, is there a second? No, well, we're going to ask for it to be <clears throat> oh, Any Anybody here regarding uh, uh, to speak on this issue? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Consent agenda, do we have any that we need to remove? We have item A through. Motion to approve through M. Second. There's nobody that's going to. Okay, motion to approve item A through M. There's been a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, co op purchases, I guess, if, unless anybody has any questions, they're the co op, but we can take items one, two, and three together. Mayor, that's part of it. That was all part of the consent agenda. Right? I need to get some glasses. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Okay, bids and contracts, item 3A. 3A, consideration and approval of change order number one for the Anzaldúas northbound additional lane project. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. This item and the following uh, three items were heard at today's bridge board meeting and were approved. For this particular item 3A, uh, these are additional services uh, for uh, this construction contract. It's actually for additional um, insurance. Uh, the contract uh, was delayed due to uh, GSA work and installation of equipment that was being installed, and so the contractor had to acquire additional insurance and is asking for additional time. Staff recommends and the bridge board recommends approval of change order number one in the amount of $2,145.86 for a revised contract amount of $161,249.86 and an extension of 220 calendar days. So we've got a question on that. Thank you. Uh, so originally, how, how many days were given for this? 180. I, I believe it was 100 and 180 and, and days. And then we're, we're now we're adding 220 to it. 
Yes, yeah. and that is because they had not started the work, so they need the time. They were delayed because they were installing equipment, so they, they could not get in there to do any of the work. So, so they're, they're, it's not their fault, in other words. Yeah. So they didn't know, I guess, when they um, when they bid on, on the item that this particular type of insurance was required? Because of the lapse of time, mm -hmm. uh, they had to get additional insurance. So th this is something outside of their control. It wasn't anticipated that the infrastructure that GSA was installing would take this amount of time to install. Right, there's two, two different contracts okay. going on. Uh -huh. And so uh, this contract was awarded when the GSA contract was awarded. And GSA has held them up for 220 days. They were unable to do work. And GSA is with the federal government that are going to house uh, federal agents there. And so basically they were just waiting until GSA completed the work. It was completely outside of Okay, their... so that's the days, okay, so right. that's one thing. So the other thing is the insurance, right? Because of the 220 days, they had to pay additional insurance to, to stay Got insured. Got it, okay. There being a first and second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against, Aye. motion carries. Item B. B is consideration and approval of contract amendment number five for additional services at Ponte of Duas. Yes, sir. These are for additional services to the uh, consulting firm Half Associates. The first part is a lump sum of uh, $1,500 for bidding services phase. And the second part is an uh, hourly not to exceed rate of $5,000 on a monthly basis <coughs> for construction administration services. If approved, this is subject to a budget reclassification. I got a question on that as well. Yes, sir. The 5000 for construction management, is that uh, typical? Is that within what we've seen in the past? So what, what they have done, um, it varies depending on the work that we that's involved. Uh, when we run into projects that, uh, that are on the bridge, there's usually some additional um, hands-on work that's needed. And so what we've done to help keep the cost down is we did it as a not to exceed. So it's not a straight out. They're going to get paid that each month. It's they, they're going to submit their hours and we'll approve them. In addition to that, staff does a lot of work to keep their hours down. So if we can address the issue, we'll address the issue. And when we can't, we include the consultant. That helps, definitely. Chair, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Double. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against, motion carries. If we can take C and D together. Yes, sir. C and D are um, revisions or amendments to the advanced funding agreements for the Ansa Lewis International Bridge northbound and southbound uh, commercial inspection facilities. So um, this, yeah, no kidding. Yeah, we should be. Okay. Yeah, we should, this is a good thing. <laughs> Most people don't know what it is, but we do. <laughs> yes, sir. These are additional funds that the, the uh, AFA's advanced funding agreements were amended to provide additional federal funding to the projects. So the um, first portion, which is the um, northbound facility, it includes uh, a estimated construction amount. Um, of CBI funds of $12.1 million, which was not previously included. The second portion for the um, southbound facilities includes an additional, uh, includes 9928000 of um, federal funds, CBI, Right 11B, and CAT 7. And so we are agreeing to participate with the city participation of these federal funds and staff recommends approval. Do I hear a motion to motion approve? approve. Yeah. Item C and D. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries, and again, congratulations yes. to everybody that has worked on this project. Thank you. <clears throat> D is consideration and approval of award of contract for the terminal restroom renovations at the McAllen International Airport. Good evening, Mayor Commissioners. Uh, staff recommends award of this contract to the lowest responsive and responsible bidder, same sink of McAllen, in the amount of $969,000 with a contract time of 100, 100 calendar days. Got a question on this item, sir? Yes, sir. The, um, the lowest responsive bidder, did we, did we check on, uh, I guess, previous contracts that they've uh, been awarded either through us or anybody else to see how well they've performed? Yes, sir. They have done several jobs here with the city. Um, so we referenced some of the city projects. They did a re-roofing project for Lark Community Center. Um, and there was some additional work here at City Hall and at Quinta Matzalan, and there has been no issues. 
Anybody, any projects outside of the city that you, you're aware of? That yeah, they have some federal jobs that they're currently working on, uh, some research facilities in Edinburgh, um, and also some uh, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers in Brownsville. Okay. Also county. <coughs> I have done some county thing. Move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Motion carries. Okay. Item F. F is consideration and authorization to negotiate scope of services for fees for delinquent municipal court cost fines and fee collections. Honorable Mayor, City Commission, this is a request to enter into negotiations with the highest rank firm. Uh, being Limebar, Gogan, Blair, and Samson after the committee has uh, submitted their evaluations. Uh, we'll come back one more time uh, with the negotiated rates for a word of contract. Any questions? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? <coughs> Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item G is consideration and approval of a lease agreement with El Puerto de Tio Jerry <laughs> at the downtown parking garage. Good evening, Mayor and City Commission. The Downtown Services Department is requesting authorization to execute a contract with uh, El Puerto del Tio Jerry restaurant for lease agreement for 1169 square feet in the food court area of the downtown parking garage. Uh, El Puerto del Tio Jerry is a reputable food, food business. It's maintained business in Palm View and Mission since 2018. The tenant will work on the finish out. Right now we have it currently, it's just an empty shell. So they'll work on the finish out and um, we're, we're offering terms of uh, waiver of a one year and then an escalation um, over the next four years. That's an incentive that we've provided for previous um, tenants and so recommending approval. Any questions? Well, we'll... Do I hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Age is consideration and approval regarding a license agreement for Trans Telco at the McAllen Hidalgo International Bridge. Good evening, Mayor, City Commissioners, Roy, Ike. This agreement is to lease a conduit for fiber use to Trans Telco at an annual fee of forty-one thousand five hundred ninety and thirty-six cents, with a five percent annual escalation rate built into the agreement. It's a ten-year agreement. This item was presented to the and approved to the Bridge Board. We're seeking City Commission for approval. So moved. Second. Any questions? If not, um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> item I. is consideration and authorization to enter into a contract with McAllen Chamber of Commerce for ARPA Fund Small Business Program. Good evening. The item before you provides the basis of the contract with McAllen Chamber of Commerce. These funds were budgeted under the American Rescue Plan. Guidance is sought just on the implementation of the program. There are a couple of questions that are in there. Um, the basis of the agreement was provided with a few of staff recommendations. Is this something that we were going to review during uh, the workshop, or is it just something that we were going to approve during the regular meeting? Yeah, so uh, the city commission gave the chamber direction I'm going to say, was at the last meeting or two meetings two back? Meetings ago. And so we believe that we memorialized what you requested. However, if there are, are things in here that you feel are inconsistent with that, we'll be glad to change that. Everything looked pretty good. I, I just uh, I saw that you know staff recommends allowing home-based businesses um, who can demonstrate they're operating according to the appropriate city zoning. I, I thought that was a good addition. Uh, just so that we're as uh, that we're casting the, the net wide, and so uh, I thought, thought that was a good addition. Everything else looks really good. Motion to approve. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vet. I'm going to ordinances. I'm sorry. Uh, ordinance providing for a budget amendment for passport facility office. Mayor and City Commission, this item is for budget amendment for our Passport Facility Division. In 2020, the Passport Division requested $10,000 for office furniture. That request was approved. However, 
Uh, the remodeling didn't get done until the end of the fiscal year, and the menus did not roll over, so we're requesting that um, that uh, budget amendment Attend. due to that. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? The motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. B is ordinance providing for a budget amendment for environmental health and code enforcement. Good evening, Mayor and City Commissioners and uh, City Manager. This approval before you today is for the removal of thousands of tires stored outdoors uh, in the elements, uh, breeding mosquitoes, collecting water, and creating a public health concern. This is a district court ordered cleanup uh, granted in October uh, that comes due on December 20th. We're working closely with Public Works for the logistics and removal of those tires. By this December 20th? This December 20th. Yes, sir. How many tires on this? Thousands. Um, we, we, How many containers? Um, I'm not sure. It's it's going to be it's going to be a while before we we completely yeah. clean out the site. Oh yeah, health issues. Is yes. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Item C. C is providing for a budget amendment in the sanitation depreciation funds for new vehicles that you approve during uh, consent. Yes, okay. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. You did very well. Thank you. D <laughs> is an ordinance amending the block length requirements. Mayor, Commissioner, so currently our development code uh, places a maximum block length at 800 feet, and this is for all subdivisions. However, we have seen an increase in block length variances requested, likewise at our development forum. Uh, we did hear from developers and engineers reiterate the fact that they would like longer block lengths. Uh, so the ordinance before you was previously presented at the Ordinance Review Committee. It does come with support from the committee. Specifically, the ordinance would set a maximum block length of 900 feet for dense developments. This is R3C and R3T, while increasing it to 1,200 feet for all other developments. Now, uh, developers will be able to increase those maximums by 10% if they adopt uh, traffic calming elements or incorporate pedestrian connections. Quarter mile collect, uh, connections will still be honored. Uh, we do recommend approval. So moved. Okay, second. Second. Any questions? If not, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. Thank you. 5A is a request, a uh, variance request for uh, the industrial science and welding at 2804 and 2600 Buddy Owens. Yes, sir. So these subject properties are located at the northeast corner of Buddy Owens and 29th. They are zoned I-2, heavy industrial. Uh, the applicant is proposing to install two multi-tenant signs along Buddy Owens, one for lots 1 through 6 and another for lots 7 through 10. The proposed signs will have a height of 35 feet and a total sign area of 240 feet. The applicant is requesting the variance to allow specifically the off-premise signage. We are recommending approval. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. A variance consideration uh, for A, the lot frontage requirements, B, alley requirement, and C, sidewalk requirements. Yes, sir. 1621 so Northway. AP James Rowe substation is a one lot uh, development measuring three <laughs> acres. It's on the west side of Ware, just north of Pecan. It is zone C3 with surrounding uses of single family homes, vacant land, and row high. Uh, the project engineer is requesting three variances. Specifically to the not fronting a public street, the property does have a perpetual easement that connects it to where, so it's not landlocked. They're also requesting a variance to the alley requirement. The property won't be needing waste collection because there won't be, uh, it's not a manned facility. And a variance to the sidewalk requirement since again the development won't be fronting a public street. Uh, the variance was presented at the November 2nd PNZ. It received unanimous recommendation of approval. Uh, there are three options before you. We are recommending option one, which is approval of the variance. Do your motion to approve? Motion no, to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. C is a variance request to the right of way and pavement requirements at 3900 South Jackson. Yes, sir. Paseo de Lago Townhomes is a 31 lot townhome development measuring 3.116 acres. It is located on the northwest corner of Jackson and Orange Wood. Uh, the project engineer is requesting a variance to the right of way and paving requirements for an internal street. Specifically, the ordinance requires 50 feet of right of way, 32 curb to curb. What the engineer is proposing is 40 feet of right of way, 30 curb to curb, and then some sidewalk easements uh, along the east west street. Uh, there is an existing 30 foot irrigation easement that runs parallel to the proposed street. So, the basis for the request is that he won't be paving uh, the street over that irrigation easement. 
Again, this item was heard at the November 16th Planning and Zoning Commission meeting. It was unanimously recommended for approval. There are three options for you. We are recommending option one, which is approval of the variance. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. D is a variance request to not require the subdivision process at 3701 Uvalde. This property is located on the south side of Uvalde, approximately 1,300 feet west of where. Uh, it is zoned AO, and surrounding uses are single-family homes, brown middle school, and vacant land. The applicant purchased the property in December of 2020 and is proposing to build a 4,000-square-foot home. Uh, the basis for the request is that the applicant uh, is not an investor and is intending to use the property only for residential use, not commercial use. Uh, the development team are recommending this approval. If the variance is approved, however, MPU does request that it be subject to a sewer reimbursement and the extension of a water line to and through along the south side of the property and dedication of 10-foot utility easements around the property, the perimeter. Uh, likewise, engineering would request that it be subject to compliance with drainage detention, sidewalk improvements, and a contractual agreement along Uvalde. Uh, there are three options before you. Staff is recommending option three, which is disapproval and compliance with state and local codes. However, if approval is considered, then we recommend it be subject to all the stated requirements in option two. Any questions? Questions. Uh, so the, what's the zoning of the property at the moment? Uh, it is AO. Okay, so we're, um, that was part of one of the conditions, wasn't it, to? That they would need to rezone to R1. Rezone to R1 and comply with all of the requirements of the subdivision process and stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Has it already gone through POB? No, sir. So they're, they're going to have to approve it. That is correct. So moved. Uh, for move to, to disapprove. Which one? <laughs> option one. What um, option are you? Which, which option? Approve. Oh. Are you approving the variance as requested? I'm approving the, the variance as requested. Okay. And not subject to any of the requirements? No, no. Okay, subject so option to two. The requirements, gotcha. Your recommendation of A1, what is it? Well, our, option, well, our main recommendation is three, which is this approval. Is but if you choose to approve it, then we recommend option two, which is that list of all the requirements. The okay. list of all yes. requirements. Okay. And let it go through PUB. Yes, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. So option okay, two. There's a motion to approve with uh, stipulated requirements. Is there a second? There's a second. If not, uh, the motion dies. Do we have any other motions? Make a motion to disapprove variance requests and the requirement of the subdivision process as set forth in option three. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All against? Nay. Motion carries. Item E. Oh, okay. I mean, uh, so this one, uh, considering that the ordinance was approved for uh, the maximum block length, this is a moot point. So moot. Yes, sir. Okay. Manager's report. The first one is the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee Appointments Recommendation. Yes, sir. So we are recommending a 14-member uh, steering committee uh, divided into seven separate sectors. We did list out some names in the memo, but obviously we, we uh, defer to your choices. So that would be two, uh, two appointments each, each position. Do we, or do we need to do this right now, Roy, or, or not? Well, uh, Edgar is moving pretty fast. Um, can you wait until the January meeting? We probably could, yes, sir. I don't know if everybody okay, do. I'm okay with that. So I, I you're asking you, for two? From each from position. Each one. Yes, sir. And if we get it to you before, or, or does it have to be approved, all of them? It, during, for committees uh, of this type, the city commission approves uh, the nomination. Yeah, okay. so like, I guess, what about, Councilor, can we do a motion to approve subject to we submit them within a week? Yes. Well, I, I think we, we need to approve the nominees, and we don't have mm. that list at this time. Right. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll bring it back for we'll Make a motion to table the item. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Against? Motion carries. B is consideration approval of pledge to participate in its time Texas community challenge. Sounds good. Hello, uh, this is uh, this is the its time Texas uh, uh, 
competition that we participate every year for the past four years we've won so this is the fifth year that we want to well, come in fine. strong <laughs> and uh, this, is, this is a fantastic uh, competition that encourages uh, our, our residents to participate in healthy activities they use an app to take pictures of themselves uh, drinking water going for a jog uh, eating healthy and so th this is a great way one to engage our, our citizens and also to compete against other cities uh, every year we've we've gone out um, uh, you know the, the Rio Grande Valley cities always come out strong and, and we're, we're part of that and we're very happy to be part of that we partner with a school district in, in, in this co competition uh, this is Luis Estrada and Veronica Garza our code enforcement officers and there are top point getters so every year they go out in the community engage business owners, uh, the school district, and other uh, or organizations to make sure that we're, we're number one. Well, this this year, the commission will be the top point getters. <laughs> I hear a motion to approve. Motion approve. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Thank you. Do we have a report on immigration, or it's the same thing? Hopefully the same thing. Uh, pretty close, honorable mayor, commissioners. Uh, over the past three weeks, we've seen an average of about 192 immigrants per day. Dropped off here in the city of McAllen. That's an increase from the 138 average that we had over the prior two weeks. Our positivity rate over the last three weeks has averaged about 2.9%. And so far this week, that seems to be right about the same. It's an excellent number, um, much lower than back at the beginning of August when it was about 50 times that. Enzo Duas Park remains currently with a capacity of about 1,500, and we're averaging less than 100 individuals per night staying at the facility and somewhere between one and 200 individuals in quarantine throughout the area as per Catholic Charities. We continue to work with our federal partners discussing uh, or, or gaining information as we can on caravans south of us. And the last thing I'd like to mention, staff of course continues to work hard on allocating dollars towards the immigration issue that we've had here. As of today, 98.8% of our 2021 expenditures have been federally funded and we continue to work towards getting those numbers as close to 100% as we can. I'll answer any questions. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, uh, future agenda items. Mr. Mayor, on this item, uh, I'd like to see if we can revisit the uh, Bowie Reservoir again. Oh, definitely. Please. Okay, anybody else? The only, <clears throat> the only item that I, I'd like to, uh, well, actually, I don't, I wouldn't like to do, but just to advise that this is Yvette Barrera's last uh, meeting. Well, I, I, I was going to. Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. No, no, that's fine. This is, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is, I think most of you all know that our city engineer extraordinaire, Yvette Barrera, is going to leave us. So this is our last meeting, and we just want to. Thank you so much, Yvette. On behalf of myself, the city commission, I know we're gonna we're losing one hell of an asset. You have done a tremendous job, and I know you're gonna do great over there. And I just wanted to myself say a few words. Roy, sorry to cut you off. So, <laughs> yes. Do <Diddle> that, <laughs> gentlemen. Yvette, thank you so much uh, for giving us those teaching moments and learning experiences. I've learned a lot uh, more than you could ever possibly know. And the only thing I ask is if I can still keep your cell number if I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and don't change questions in all things and all your. And thank you so much. Thank you. That definitely, in, in my first six months here in the city commission, you'll be an available uh, source of information and uh, get me to see the projects and uh, and driving with me as well. So also for me, it's, it's been very generous for you to to do that and, and and the input that you put in into that. So thank you so much and. You're going to the county now, so I'm going to see you a lot more now over yeah. there. So, thank yeah, you. Just a couple of words. Uh, I remember your your strong leadership during the 2018 rain event. You know, we had the town hall at Las Palmas, and just you being there, talking about the projects that we're already working on and we're going to complete, was was very helpful to kind of calm the residents. And so it's it's just that leadership that you've you've had. Um, over these last many years that, that I really appreciate it. I know the rest of us do as well. So thank you for all that you've done for the city of McAllen. Which makes it difficult to lose. Gracias. I, it has been an honor. I'm not going to cry. I've done enough crying for the past week of my staff. Um, it has been an honor and it has been my pleasure to work with the city of McAllen. Um, I think professionally I grew up here with the city. I started in, 
in 2005 as the transportation engineer and the work that we have accomplished has been I think amazing for the city of our size and for the staff that we have I wasn't gonna cry <laughs> and for the inspiration that we received from you as a commission from Roy as our city manager um, making us believe things that we didn't think we could do and we did them and we were able to accomplish them um, we have a, a staff that that has had some great leadership and um, a lot of vision from the Commission and, and your support as well and so thank thank you all very much for what you've allowed me to do for the city and I'm taking all that with me and I live in McAllen so I'm, I'm still here <laughs> But thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. <laughs> okay. Uh, anything else? Future agenda items? I'm not a Roy. The, the only other thing I was thinking about, I think we may have discussed earlier. Uh, expansion of City Hall. Yes, expansion. expansion of City Hall. Well, I think uh, I think it's about time. <laughs> so I like it. I actually like a future agenda. Item. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sir. Uh, let's see uh, items in executive session. Councilor. Yes, Mayor. With respect to executive session mm -hmm. item seven A, I recommend the commission take no action. With respect to executive session item. B, a 7B1, I recommend that the City Commission consider a motion authorizing the City Manager and City Attorney to negotiate a uh, possible sale or lease of property as was described to the Commission in Executive Session. Is there a motion to that effect? So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Against? Motion carries. Um, Mayor, and I'm going to direct this to Mayor Pro Tem, uh, B, 7B2, um, Mayor, you, you recused yourself from that item, um, but I recommend that the City Commission entertain a motion authorizing the City Manager and City Attorney to negotiate terms of a possible transfer of the asset um, as described in Executive Session. Do I hear a motion on item 7B2? So moved. Do I hear a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those against, same sign. Omar Quintanilla, duly noted, is voting against. Motion carries. Mayor, with respect to item 7A, I'm sorry, 7C1, I recommend the City Commission entertain a motion authorizing City Manager and City Attorney to um, offer economic development incentives as described in Executive Session. I heard a motion to that effect. So move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Against? Motion carries. And Mayor, with respect to item 7C2, I recommend the City Commission authorize the City Manager and City Attorney to negotiate the economic incentives described in Executive Session. Do I hear a motion to that effect? So move. Second. Is that it, Councillor? That's it. Well, I just want to thank everybody and thank the Commission. We started a little late today, did a few proclamations, and because our Commission is prepared, it's 6.07. You all go home to your families. Thank you all very much. Thank Merry you. Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Thank you. <laughs>